Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander Epic. It's 4v4 ladder action this afternoon going down on a generated map. First of all, some quick info coming from Jip. He would like to remind everybody that custom AIs are a thing. If you're like me and you dislike playing FAF sometimes because you know when you get curb stomped, your opponent will have the ability to gloat. Not that that happens at all at FAF, but the fear is there. Uh, so what could be better than an opponent that doesn't talk back? So AIs are often the way. However, the AI that ships with the game, not brilliant. So there have been people over the years at FAF who have created custom AIs. And here is a wiki page on the FAF wiki talking about just that. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. If it's not there, you know what to do. Yell at me until I make it so. I always forget. So it's helpful when I get abused in the comments to remember such things. What do the... Custom AIs entail, well, you've got adaptive playstyle, responding to player actions, player tactics, unit microing, FAF balance and metafocus. Obviously, FAF has changed much over the years of its tenure, so it's good to have AIs that utilize all of those changes. Better CPU performance, that's pretty huge. I don't know if you remember back in the day, the AIs with all the waypoints, the thousands of units and the scripts and things it would run, it would clog up the game a little bit and really slow it down. So obviously, the newer AIs run better. Greater challenge unit mod compatibility. For example, by one measure, the fastest custom AI was more than twice as fast as the default adaptive AI as of August 2022. So that's not to be sniffed at. And uh, here is a list of some of those AIs. You can see they've been made by different people. Oh, this one's called Dilly Dally. That was actually an older player, not made by Dilly Dally himself, made by another player, Softliz. So uh, yeah, but anyway, a little bit of trivia there. Um, there's uh, another one named Dilly, again by Softly. So I guess uh, he had a limited scope when it came to naming things. But anyway, there's lots there. And down at the bottom, you've got instructions how to install and play with all of those things. So you have absolutely no excuse. Go and check them out and give them a try. All right, that's enough of that. Let's get on with today's game. As we said, it's going to be 4v4 ladder. It's going down on a generated map. And those masters of mediocrity return once again to show us that uh, it's not their personal hygiene that makes people keep their distance. Average Joe day today here at Galcast. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching! Ka-ching! Alrighty, what have we got here? Well, we'll talk about the map in just a second. First of all, let's introduce our players. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top, this Team 2 down here at the bottom. Going first for Team 1 at the top left of the screen as they gate in. We have Martian going Cyber and Bless him, opening first land and going Cyanide Cyan. Team member number two across the pond, sporting this season's fabulous Vivacious Violet and going UEF, how terribly sensible. It's uh, well, it's not MoFo, it's MFo. MFo1. There we go. And he's opening first land. Team member number three, further to the east still, this time in electric blue, it's another UEF, it's Fleischer Esser. And I was curious to see what that meant, so I looked it up, and apparently in German that means meat eater. I wonder if that's a euphemism for something. His decision, no judgment from me. Opening first land, going electric blue, and last but not least, over here to his bottom right, we have Born to Chill. There he is, going Seraphim, opening first land in baby blue. So that's team one, comprised of a Cyber and a Seraphim, and two UEF. Checking out team two now, starting down here at the bottom right in mellow yellow, in a blink. There he is, opening with first land and going Cybran also across the water. We have another Cybran. This time it's Tutan Harmoon in Halley Borange Orange. He's going first land and by the looks of things, second air. Team member number three to his left still in Burgundy Red. A third Cybran. It's Broby. And he's gone first land and last but not least up by the water. It's everyone's favourite Welshman. It's Vexy. There he is, our one and only Aeon of the day, going Ferrari Red, opening first land. Look at that. Nice good luck in local chat there. No BM needed today. Oh, and a response. Good luck. Have fun. It's always nice, isn't it? Sets the stage. That's the sort of play we want. So, racial makeup of Team 2, 3 Cybrin and an Aeon. Again, quality at 100%. We'd expect nothing less from an algorithmically balanced game as the ladder matches are. And if you take a, take a look at the averages between the teams, they're exactly 1102. Of course, these are uh, ladder rankings, not global rankings. So it's possible that these are all top pros. In fact, I know they're not because I know some of these people personally. But um, it's uh, <laughs> nonetheless, it's not what the yardstick for what we usually 
measure pro capabilities, but I'm pretty sure I've uh, labeled it right. They are of Joe level. What has the map gen given us today in terms of reclaim to begin with? Well, absolutely nothing. That is the stingiest amount of reclaim I think I've ever seen almost on any map, let alone a 20 by 20 kilometer map. We've got four stones of 75 mass a pop in the center then we've got some more 75s just out from that with the odd 38 kicking around and then oh hold on to your horses we've got 113 a piece down here and that's it that's literally it a more liberal smattering of mass points though available in what will likely become the proverbial no man's land right in the center of the map here so i mean i don't know it's going to be hard so a decent amount of mass points in the center not that many in the starting location i suppose in this bottom right hand corner you've got a decent amount for inner blink and up at the top left of course for martian but uh, otherwise uh, it's pretty stingy i'd say so despite it being a 4v4 don't expect it to you know accelerate the game too quickly it might be a slightly slower start but we'll see how things progress nonetheless the ponds to the left and right could play a part for the naval game I know they're not big, but look at the proximity that some of the main bases have to the water's edge here. Vexy on the riverbank or the lake bank, along with Born to Chill. You could imagine if they have some cruisers sitting off their coastline here and here, that could be a problem, potentially. Uh, but we'll see how it develops. One inbound lab from Vexy. One flare already taken some hits, however. Looking for an engineer. To befall his path so he can come and cause some problems acus out all across the board from team one with the exception of oh actually no it's not it's only two <laughs> i would say all across the board i thought i saw three but i don't i see two in the center the two central players moving out which makes sense but uh, two corner players a little bit slower however board chill is on the move nonetheless where is he headed can we get a read on where you're going, sir? It looks like he's headed up over here. And it looks like he's aggressively pl placing down a reinforcement point over on the other side of the pond here, right in the center of the field. I guess if he can amass enough troops here, maybe he feels like he could shut down this approach from Inner Blink. I imagine Inner Blink and probably Tutankhamun as well his nearest assisting teammate are unlikely to allow that to fly so we'll see if he's able to shut that down some inbound mech marines some lab play also from fleischer oh it's not fleischer actually it's fleisch isn't it fleisch getting that uh, shut down as well as those labs run straight into tutankhamun's commander we've also got a t1 bomber or two out over in the west belonging to Vexy, who's managed to kill off one mass point and not much else i think for the cost of two bombers so probably not particularly cost effective play there but always worth a shot you never know what you'll get oh no we have a dropper something that we haven't had at guilecast for quite some time you used to see nap problems and uh, major laggy events all the time in fact they're pretty good these days but one was bound to catch up to us eventually so mofo disappears out of the game who's going to inherit his stuff initially it's the highest rated player born to chill will he transfer that over to one of these two players though yes he will so fleisch going to be handling all of the central play will that prove too much we'll have to wait and see he's certainly embroiled in it at the moment though going toe to toe with Tutan Harmoon right in the middle those two exchanging direct fire between one another's commanders but yes if they were going to lose anybody they were ha they'd be happy to lose the 964 MFO the potential weakest link in terms of rating so minimal damage inflicted on uh, what the ultimate outcome could have been what they've got left they've got a 1087 and 1125 and a 1232 players to look out for on team two side of things because we didn't mention it before are vexy and broby in the bottom left hand corner so uh, that will be the danger zone where most of the aggression that team one will have to watch out for will be coming from inbound units up through the center from Vexy and Tutankhamun. 
Fleisch now have to control all of this area by his lonesome. We'll be looking to get some assistance, I'm sure, out from Martian. Martian and Vexy going for a bit of naval play in this western pond. Not so in the eastern pond, though. Both of the players flanking this lake, this lake deciding against investing in the naval game. We do have a gun upgrade on the way for Born to Chill, who successfully placed those four land factories and is pumping units out of them. Again, though, it is quite an aggressive, aggressive placement. We'll have to wait and see if he's able to hold on to those. Tutankhamun tickling away at a hydrocarbon with a couple of Medusas and then brings in his comp to help finish that off. Fleisch has moved back towards the center, trying to cover all bases. Well, two bases, but that's not how the phrase goes, is it? Vexy getting a gun upgrade, 30% complete just to the southwest of the center point and progressing nicely. A little bit of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty coming in across the water. And if you're new to FAF, what am I talking about? Well, some tanks go by track and wheel. Aeon and to a certain extent, Seraphim, not so much. They like to hover a lot of the time. So those T1 tanks able to cross the waters cause all sorts of problems. Not too many problems though today, just a T1 gunship brought in to deal with those and also survives the little counter-attack there from one of Vexy's T1 interceptors. This was the push that I was expecting, or at least the first potentially of many in a blink. Probably unhappy about this little operation that set up shop cl so close to him. He has got four land factories in play. He's also got a T1 point defense. Will he be allowed to keep it in a blink with a couple of point defenses of his own? Born to chill with that gun upgrade, able to engage at range with a decent rate of fire. In a blink, looking to lock this area down with an assortment of PD. Definitely want to get access to T2 tech sooner rather than later. At the moment, those T1 point defenses are vulnerable to the commander. Nice little run by, though, from Tutankhamun, who skirts in with some Mantis in towards Fleisch's main base. Engineers in the area have erected a point defense. And that's too much for these Mantis to handle. No Medusa artillery pieces in the unit mix. So not able to engage at range. Oh, look at that, a lovely little ghetto gunship to help defend. Always happy to see that. Labs on board, a T1 transport. We can fire out of it. Make a wonderful little combination. Apologies if you can hear my dog in the background there. It's a little bit snarky today. His uh, curb crawling business has been shut down by a rival pimp. Dashen from number 72. Nasty piece of work, that one. Born to chill. Under fire here. Now sub 6,000 hit points. Getting into it with inner blink. He's managed to position his comm in between the opposing comm and his facilities further back, which he still holds on to. He's going to have to drop back and be a little careful, having shed so many hit points. He's a tad more vulnerable. Back to the center. Vexy on the rampage. Double Aeon sniper comm. Both gun upgrades completed rate of fire range damage you name it just a nasty piece of work all round we've got some riptides here so Fleischer Esser made the transition to T2 land there is the headquarters target of opportunity if Vexy can push up that much unlikely he's going to risk that much however 
needs to be careful that he doesn't get taken out right here, right now. There's a lot of units now advancing on his position. Vexy down sub 10,000 hit points now into the yellow and getting surrounded. A lot of T1 spam now catching up to the comm also. He's down to around 50% base health now at 6,200 hit points, but doesn't seem to be the target priority of all of the T1 spam. I'm wondering if Fleischer made a bit of a mistake here. If he had targeted the comm, Vexy might have been down and out, but instead this is just a run-by setup. I think he could have got the comm there, you know. Jeez, almost died, says Vexy. I'm wondering if he's thinking the same, if he'd been prioritized as the target there if he would have been taken out I think he might have made a bit of a mistake there but remember of course Fleischer handling a larger sphere of operations than everybody else so we will excuse that little lapse or potential lapse in concentration maybe he just didn't think that that was going to do it and he wanted to cause some more damage but really if you look at it what damage has he caused he's taken out one T1 land factory and damaged a bunch of others otherwise no other real damage inflicted. Maybe one or two mass points here and there. I'm not sure how many of these were operational before that attack begun. But definitely having a pop at the comm was worthwhile there. I just don't think he saw the opportunity. Must have been busy elsewhere. T2 engineers up front for Born to Chill. Busy throwing down Tech 2 point defense trying to lock down this area. He's also getting a T2 upgrade on the commander, which will restore a big old chunk of health to his comm, which is still in the yellow. About 7,800 hit points. You can see a slight issue with the placement there. A naughty piece of hillside right in his way. Blocking that inbound fire. Seraphim Tech, not able to tell the difference. I mean, none of the racers can tell the difference. We'll get very upset with pieces of land from now and, now and again when uh, they get in their way. A transition to T2 Navy though, complete for Martian and gets his first Salem class destroyer say off the conveyor belt but out of the uh, the wet dock and that is a major advancement for team one in this western pond and potentially a problem for Vexy who has also got up a second and third naval yard but it's further over to the east big attack underway in the east further still want to chill completed the t2 upgrade but didn't get enough point defense down to secure this position. I think it's overrun now by the looks of things. In a blink, committing a decent number of forces to this attack. Born to Chill forced back into the water. Also got a T2 Rhino in here, although it's very nearly dead. There it goes. Nice little overcharge to finish it off. Three of the four factories taken out. We do have some reinforcements moving in now from Fleischer Esser. Fleischesser. While his comm is rooted to the spot over here, getting a second upgrade. First upgrade was actually the rover drones. Adding a big old chunk of build capacity to that comm, making it build things faster. And there is the gun upgrade almost immediately afterwards. Look at the speed that that's flying up. Fleischesser sitting on two base, of course, pulling in a sizable 135 mass per tick. Next highest income is Broby on Team 2 at 126. In terms of team incomes, it's 394 in favor of Team 2 versus 291 in favor of Team 1. So Team 1's somewhat far behind here, and that's reflected in the total mass over here to the right, you can see it's 204k versus 178k in favor of Team 2. Big old push now underway again from Fleischesser, who has Tutan Harmon down into the red at 1,200 hit points and again missing a com kill. 
going for the sizable run by. Looks like he's moving it straight in for an attack on Broby's main base. Broby down here, unupgraded commander, lacking in defenses, does have T2 engineers. Is he picking them all up in the skyhook though? By the looks of things he is, maybe he's moving up a little bit further forward to throw down some defenses, keep trying to keep this force out of his main base. But wow, so two potential errors there from Fleisch Esser, who could have had two com kills to his name. Tutankhamun, lucky to survive that. Checking back in with the Western Pond now. We've got two destroyers out from Martian. A blockade which has cut off the entrance to the sort of the right leg of that Western Pond. And that's where Vexy has placed his T2 naval yard. But look at this. Destroyers allowed to move up to the coastline, just what we were talking about at the beginning of the game. And now they're raining blue murder down. Well, cyan murder down on Vexy's main base. Two core mass points down. Two more here are vulnerable, both at Tech 3. That is not ideal. Vexy reluctant to send in his subs, which are blockading the entrance to his position. He wants to get to critical mass, I'm guessing, and then move out and shut this down. Maybe take out the naval yard too. Little attack was underway while we were talking about that from in a blink over in the east once again. Born to chill, able to shut that down again and still hold on to this position just barely. Tutankhamun trying to keep out another push from Fleischesser. Mongoose and Pillars continue on that same trajectory. Broby took a little bit of damage from that last attack. You can see some flaming mass storage here and there, a damaged mechs, a couple of destroyed mass storage also. But the important thing is he managed to sort it. And he managed to get a quick gun upgrade on his comm and stealth. I don't think he had that before either, or maybe he did. Seems like too short a time to get two operational upgrades out of it. And a T3 air factory has allowed him to get T3 gunships out. And that really does shut down this avenue for attack. How are we looking at the air situation? We do have air superiority fighters for Born to Chill. Let's compare numbers, shall we? He's got 10 in play right now. And Broby, who seems to be the only person on Team 2 with Tech 3 air, he's got 6. So not too close. What was that about? Cruisers won't fire WTF. I wonder what at specifically. So all of the core mass destroyed bar one. A little bit of counter pressure brought out from some Auroras. They're not going to fare too well though against these naval units. Virtually no hit points. They're outgunned in damage and range. Just generally a bad place to be but might have bought the remnant of his base a little bit of time got two cruisers now he's got two or three sorry Vespa sub hunters this might be an even fight versus four destroyers you know, I don't know what was the range on these cruisers range is pretty poultry that's the red line a decent amount of damage those Aeon cruisers. And now look at this. Tech 3 Air brought in the whalers that we were talking about a moment ago, focusing in on Born to Chill's comm. He's down to 5,600 hit points. Born to Chill wastes no time, though, in bringing in his air superiority fighters. Gunships get taken out. Remnant of their escort detail are now on the run from Chill's fighters. Just two remain. He's sticking with it. It's early in the game, so we haven't got much in the way of anti-air capabilities dotted around. They will stick it to those last two fighters and shoot them down. Nicely played. And finally, we do have some naval presence in a blink. Recognising the capabilities, went straight for a T2 naval yard and has spat out a destroyer. 
This represents a whole new threat for Born to Chill. He decides to counter with a couple of Notha fighter bombers. Air is very much his bag right now. Quickest way to get some offensive capabilities against this threat. Salem taken care of. Will there be enough of them to take out the naval factory immediately afterwards? They're certainly going for it. Some 11,000 hit points to chew through. But no inbound aerial response. As we said, the only person handling air for Team 2 was Broby down here. He lost that air battle. He's sending in three more fighters, but they're horribly outnumbered. Ground-based T1 flak brought into counter, but it's too little too late. The HQ is destroyed. So a threat that recently emerges for Born to Chill dealt with in pretty decent timing, actually. Pretty short order. Saucy little drop inbound. Engineers, is he going to try and set up shop? Having obliterated Vexy's main base. Vexy down to just 57 mass per tick. And that has actually almost leveled the income totals. 50 or 530 to 533 more or less has leveled. Big old push through the center. A decent amount of titans on the field. So Fleisch Esser wasted no time in taking up is ground spam. Vexy under severe pressure right now. And he is going to try and burrow in like a tick. Six engineers get straight to work on a land factory. But there are the remnant of Vexy's engineers heading back in to re-establish looking at in terms of reclaim to be snagged here while I accidentally take a screenshot <laughs> instead of pull up the right thing. I thought, do I mention it? And I was like, I can't disguise the fact they will have heard the little noise there. So yes, just taking a screenshot of uh, that very crucial part of the battlefield. I just wanted to see those engineers before they got annihilated by these T1 gunships that were brought in to deal with them. going on with the little construction drones there but yes look at this and this is tough because he's got a decent number of Salem's which can sprout legs and go walkie walkies Vexy set up shop over here with a miasma artillery piece hello is that our first experimental I think it might be almost on the nose of 25 minutes not surprisingly it's at the cheap but deadly monkey lord which is moving out towards the center and boy could they do with it because right now things not looking great for team two they do have a nice little counter push underway a whole bunch of bernies moving up to the top of the screen all through gunships by born to chill brought in along with t1 bombers from fleisch Going to lose some mexes here. There goes one. Here come the Bernies. You don't know why. Just take a look at the way they walk. That is exactly Bernie Sanders's gate. Finally dealt with, but they managed to kill off three teched up mexes on their way towards mechanical afterlife another group of Bernies trying to defend against Fleisch Esser as he brings in his loyalists in towards Tutankhamun's base Tutankhamun has his comm which is unupgraded incidentally hasn't used it in any aggressive fashion this game he's been rather careful but this could have been nasty were it not for the timely construction of that spider bot, as deadly as Salem's are, no match for the dreaded Monkey Lord and its colossal laser incinerating the bows, which 
should never have been on land in the first place. Will it continue on to finish these land factories over here? It would be a good idea to get rid of Martian from this corner, if at all possible. Vexy still with this naval presence over here, though. I'm surprised they haven't managed to finish that off. Gunships brought in from Born to Chill, having spotted the threat from the Monkey Lord. Where is their escort detail, however? It's all the way over here. And so those gunships are going to get annihilated, I would imagine. Oh, and some strap bombers in from Fleischessa, taking huge chunks of hit points off that experimental now sub-20,000 hit points in total. But it has reached the water's edge starts to work on that little naval blockade that Martian has been sitting on. Born to Chill still in the center. Vexy sending all kinds of energy over to Broby who's doing what Cybrans do. He's already done the microwave laser and is now working on a teleporter. 74% done there. So tele-snipe Soon to be on the cards. Martian, if he stays where he is, he's currently safe. Broby, not Broby, Born to Chill, sorry, is on the water's edge. Vulnerable, potentially, but a lot of hit points to chew through. He's got nano repair, he's got T2 engineering suite. Won't hold up well to the laser, but if he's got a couple of gunships kicking around, that could be a, an even fight or certainly an exchange. As Fleisch Esser. There he is. He's probably the most vulnerable, I'd say. Working on some TAC missile batteries up front, because why not? Looking to make a real nuisance of himself. Always fun to see. That Monkey Lord's still alive. 7,900 HP, 25 kills to its name. Throwing everything at it, even the T1 Jesters. Another strap bomber in over the top gets bumped off as it gets its payload away. Monkey Lord down to 4,100 hit points now. Jester's getting shredded by fire from the cruisers in the bay over to the north. Born to Chill on the rampage right now. Going after in a blink in a big way. Broby has completed... His upgrades. He now has operational Mazercom. Tele Mazercom, even. And is currently sending away the spy planes. It looks like he might want to take a pop at Born to Chill. If he gets enough separation between him and the water, he will make himself a target. Scout for comms, says Broby. All of his spy planes got annihilated, running into Born to Chill's air wing, loitering over this eastern pond. Another wave of spy planes away from Broby, this time hugging the western edge of the screen. A lot of those are going to get shot down as they pass. Actually, not as many as I thought. Passed right by a healthy group of air superiority fighters belonging to Martian, but many of them survived. This is the view from Broby himself. Not interested in anything but assassination attempts by the looks of things. Plenty of opportunities. I mean, you could get your comm right in here, cause a problem and teleport it back. It does leave you open to potential strap bomb attack, and we've seen some of those lurking around from Fleischessa. Born to chill back in the water. See, this is the problem. We're just literally lying in wait, waiting for this telemazer action now, which could happen at any point. Big old counter push now from another group of Bernies. What is their mission, I wonder, next? Affirmative action for short people could be anything. 
Where are they headed? Doesn't look like they know. They're very burny. Last known position was in the water. It definitely is in the water further to the north. We're starting to get some more development down here at the bottom left for Martian, slowly but surely increasing the number of T1 land factories. Team 2 cannot allow this to go on. The longer it stands, potentially the worse the infection. Need to stamp it out with some serious antibiotics. Ah, and there it is. He hasn't ended up going for a commander. Instead, did exactly what I said he might. Teleported into Martian's base. I really nearly missed that. I didn't see the action itself. I was just looking for the comm to see if he had executed a teleport maneuver or was in the process of doing so, and he had. And that was the target. And would you look at that? Whole three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe more destroyed buildings. I think it's probably eight. A couple of kill their staging facilities over here also. But not too shabby. That will have cut down Fleisch S's capabilities. And Vexy finds himself in amongst power plants when I think they got picked off by an attack of strap bombers from Fleisch Esser. Vexy almost going down again there, down to 3,000 odd hit points at the time. Those volatile explosions of the P-Gens not to be underestimated. He gets himself under shield coverage at the back of Broby's base. Lovely little counter-attack there for that Telemazer attempt. Well, not really attempt, it was a successful raid as far as I'm concerned. Forward tack missile batteries from Fleisch S's forward outpost. Launching against Tutankhamun's forward outpost. It's all largely T1, not too much in the way of threat, but it's something to shoot at. Now, having seen the Telemazer, this concerns me. Fleisch Esser right now should be getting himself to a pond or spamming T1 point defense at his comms location. Ouch. What was that? That was a lot of dead burnies from something. What uh, inflicted the damage, I wonder? Was it another strap bomb attack? But uh, anyway, in a blink, pushing up past this position, the position that has caused so much problems for Team 2 in this game so far. Born to Chill finally evicted. Got his comm on his own side of the pond now. Although he looks like he's thinking about having another pop. Maybe he's just heading back into the water, concerned about the next Telemazer manoeuvre. Tactical missile launcher, says Vexy. Well spotted, sir. Born to chill. Completes an experimental, and it looks like the infection is finally getting dealt with. His counterfire from Salem's on the coastline. But uh, a saucy little Gunther bank out of range from the destroyers, but in range of that position. I can actually select. Uh, there we go. So that is the range on those T2 artillery emplacements. And Martian won't be trying to hold on to that too strenuously. Too much of a task. We will let that go. Big old group of loyalists just meeting that inbound Titan pressure from Fleischesser. And so going to drop back 
How many Bernies are we looking at there? We're looking at 89 in total, including this group down here, but I want to focus in on this little pile. 49 Bernies up front with 10,000 potential DPS. Compare that to the Titan position up here. 40, which actually equates to a lot less, 5,400 DPS, but he has got some T1 in there with another 1,600. So that second experimental, I think it's the second one, was an Ithota out from Born to Chill. And he has sent it straight to the southern bank of that eastern pond. Roby telling his teammate to pull back. Doesn't look like he's interested in it though. Looks like he feels he can get it somewhere sensitive. Martian pulling back with his fleet slightly. Doesn't need to stick around. He just needs to keep it in range and prevent this. Which he has. He would love to shut this down, I'm sure, and keep Vexy out of this western pond completely. And it would be considerably harder to deal with. Still no new Mazer operation. I'm actually amazed... He hasn't gone after Fleisch Esser. I'm guessing he just hasn't spotted them, but he's very upset that his teammate in a blink is feeding mass. He's just sending in those loyalists in in single file. What have we got back here in terms of defenses? A pretty robust line of Cerberus turrets. And then some uh, tracers further back. I mean, at the very least, he's going to take out a couple of T3 mexes here. Maybe, not sure if that was T3, but there's another one on the, the pond bank. In come the strap bombers. Oh, and there's the telemazer. We knew it was coming. Hard to predict when. There's the GG, but that was a mistake. He knew they had a telemazer. He should have been building T1 point defense. And Broby, where is he off to next? Did he go home? He is out. Aras completed. Where did he go? Yeah, into this bottom pond. In the uh, center. Took a little bit of damage, but nothing to worry about. Still had some 10k hit points remaining when he got safe. And now, Born to Chill, responsible for everything. And they think that's not a fair division of labor. So he has passed over MFO's original base control over to Martian. That's a much more sensible decision, I think. But oh, how the mighty have fallen. Still, in terms of eco, it's 1k income per tick. And Team 1 actually up by some 20,000 mass which admittedly for 40 minutes into a game isn't that much. But we did say mass was going to be at a premium in this game. Although there's a lot of mass points to be had in the middle, holding onto them is very difficult. It's where all the fighting takes place. But the experimentals are coming thick and fast now and we've all started quantum gate production. So support commanders going to be coming in, although I say all, I'm not seeing any from board to chill yet. In a blink, yet to start. So yeah, I was uh, jumping the gun on that exclamation. Nothing of the sort, only one quantum gateway in play right now. Vexy could really do with it. He is uh, languishing on a mere 146 mass per tick. A long way away from where he wants to be. He needs to start pulling in support commanders and get a little bit of mobile income generated. Although hard to do when you're pulling in such paltry numbers to begin with. Just never survived from that attack. 
in the West. Incidentally, I call Vexy Welsh. I hope he is Welsh. It's been a long time since I played with him. I know he was friends with the pony, so he might be Irish. Apologies if I've made that mistake, sir. Nothing personal. I struggle to remember my own children's ages, so... Little details like this sometimes get missed. And after the tele-snipe success from their own team members, they become aware, of course, that Martian is a Cybrin on Team 1, so they are taking precautions themselves. Vexy spamming up some T1 point defense around his commander. While also having started work on a Colossus. Which is uh, tough to do on the poultry numbers of mass he's bringing in. But uh, I'm thinking he's going to be able to get in and properly re-establish his base now. Maybe. He says there's a very large force comes in through the center from Martian. Bricks moving through the eastern pond. For Tutankhamun. That is a significant number of gunships. The In the last... Five, ten minutes, unit numbers have gone through the proverbial roof, and we're about to have a very large air encounter, which I think is pretty evenly balanced. Maybe Broby has an advantage. But Broby has a slight advantage in air superiority numbers. That's opened the door for a not the, sorry, no, a Corsair fighter bomber attack on one of these megaliths. These two megaliths just dispatching. One of Broby's monkey lords. Another crab further to the north. But look at this. After just how dominant Martian's navy has been. He's now having trouble against some floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty down here. But I didn't factor in Born to Chill when I was looking at ASF numbers. And Born to Chill comes in with his own air superiority fighters and just annihilates Broby. So air control temporarily now with Team 1. They're going to utilize that by bringing the T2 gunships to bear against these T3 bouncers. They've got to get them out of commission pretty quick to clear the skies. For other attacks... On other ground units, just a couple of bouncers remaining. Combination of Volthu and broadswords now, and suddenly these Bernies look a little bit isolated, although they had their own bouncers in the mix. That's why we saw a withdrawal there. Lots of spy planes out over the main base of Martian. Who's real bit rebuilt nicely after that telemazer attack. And mustn't forget, of course, that threat still exists. Broby can launch another one of those anytime he wants. Broadswords all mostly intact, bar a handful. Taking some damage. Although that will be bad for your health. That's a terrible place to land them. Roby says, thank you very much. Some free kills. Martian loses a handful of fighters himself. That was a terrible place to land those broadswords. He has lost all of them completely pointlessly. These sorts of things can happen, though. 45 minutes into a game. Very easy to do. Fat boy just on this little sandbar. Enough to keep those artillery cannons out of the water and firing. Loyalists trying to catch up to it. But it's going to dip back under the water before they can get there. So they're just taking extra fire. A 
So we're not seeing much in the way of artillery pieces or anything like that. They are sticking with experimentals. 46 minutes gone. We haven't had a nuke yet. Lots of mass fab farms queued up for Martian at the top of the screen. That's actually quite a nice little isolated point to build stuff. Easy to defend in this little breach here. Keep things safe and then you've got two ponds on either side. Not going to save you from experimentals of course and other T3 amphibious units. And an Awasar experimental bomber about to go online. And that's with uh, an air advantage that Team 1 have had. It was a pretty comfortable air advantage although it seems to have dwindled somewhat. Martian does have a sizable number of Geminis over to the west. But Born to Chill has had his numbers whittled down. That is a begging for an experimental bomb right in the middle of it. Take care of the whole batch in one shot. Doesn't want to expose his bomber to an unnecessary danger, however. Come on, you've got to go after that. That's too good to be true. Fat boy re-emerging out of the waves to put some damage on them. They recognize the threat, I think, as they drift back towards friendly territory. And there's the bomb. Where's it going? It is indeed going after that group of Bernies drifted too close. That was nice, actually. He used the fat boy to bait them in just to bring them a little bit closer so he could keep his bomber safe. Then unleashed blue murder. Fat boy can continue to move further south. Lay the smack down on this smaller group. And they're just going to get picked apart. Another bomb away, this time to the units to the west. That's a bunch of bricks that aren't going to make it home. Pretty clinical use of this bomber so far from Born to Chill. Nice to see. Another group of gunships. This time it's Volthus, T2s and one broadsword going after these bouncers. Do so much damage though. Bomber brought in once again. This time he is going to make himself a target. It doesn't take much to shoot these bad boys down, and he's lost it in one foolhardy maneuver. Had two fantastic bombing runs, and needlessly exposed him to danger on the third. It would have been better just to keep that bomber in the backfield until such a time as they'd achieved air superiority once again. The group of ambassadors. Targeting this lead megalith belonging to Tutankhamun. There's the air force of Broby. It's lying in wait. Massacre all of them before they offload a second payload. It manages to keep them relatively safe, losing just a couple in that exchange. Fota and Fat Boy under the water here now. And in a blink, just taking the opportunity to try and chip away at them with a couple of throwaway torpedo bombers, a trio indeed. Another Mega and Fat, says Vexy. Vexy, who still doesn't have control of his old base. Still bringing in a paltry 157. Team 1 now up 300 mass per tick on Team 2. That is significant and it's 2.16 million versus 2.02 million in terms of total mass. So they might be down a couple of players but they have been generating more mass, more wealth. Look at these defences. That is a nervous chappy right there. Born to Chill taking... No chances with 
any units that might be coming out. Just look! That is excess. That it really is excessive. 54 units of T2 point defense. No wonder his comm feels safe from Tele Snipe sitting on land there. Roby would be on a suicide run trying to deal with that. Oh dear. That is. That's a lot of Geminis from In a Blink. Has air control drifted over to Team 2 now? Broby with 109 fighters in a blink. Hard to read. I think that's 83. Jip, if you're watching, I want a change of colour on the number font for some of these. I cannot read them. Haven't been able to do it for months. And 141 fighters, though, for Martian. Ooh, large numbers of strap bombers at the top of the screen for Born to Chill. Where are they headed? 12 strats in that group. But Born to Chill is bang out of fighters. He's just got this little group hovering over that eastern pond. Not ideal. 52 minutes down, and we are nowhere near... Working out a conclusion to this one. Seems relatively even. Team 1 down 2 men. Team 2 at full complement but down on eco by some three to 400 mass per tick. Look at that. It's now 1.8k to 1.3k. Numbers do vary. That's the reclaim situation on the field now. Oh so very different from the beginning of the match. And that stingy start dished out by... The map gen. Lots of mass to be scooped over here. But look at the sheer numbers of experimentals roaming the center now. Broby with a couple of megas. And a monkey lord. We've got a damaged mega from Tutankhamun. Two defending megaliths from Martian, who must be feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious right now. He has got a decent number of Percivals on the ground, working on a fatty further back. Vexy, core mass now back in operation, all upgrading towards Tech 2. Just get the impression that we're building towards a big finish here. Mass Fab Farms complete for Martian, who really is bringing home the bacon. I mean, Born to Chill is, has a nice income at 548, but 1.3k now coming in for Martian, who has tons of support commanders, uh, RAS presets, so they're all bringing in income out of these quantum gates. And then he's been busy building mass fab farms at the top of the screen over the last 15 minutes in that nice defensible position. And look at the defenses out front. Yeah, this cannot be allowed to continue. Team 2 are going to have to step on this and do it relatively quickly. It seems like they're prioritizing airplay Mostly in a blink with a sizable number of ASFs now and a massive group of Corsair fighter bombers sitting further back. Broby with a decent air force. And they're also pumping out experimentals. So it's been a little bit quiet now for about five, six minutes. Are we seeing the beginnings of an attack as Broby moves forward with three crabs and a monkey lord? Will this finally be the end to this group of naval yards which have caused so many problems throughout the game? He's got a couple of uh, strategic missile submarines here. So he could be ready to fire nukes out of those. Could we finally see our first nuke in the game? But Vexy has actually, to his credit, amassed three Colossus. And he's still only pulling in 229 mass. Aerial response, first on the scene, whalers in from the Martian, or rather just Martian. I want to say there because of the movie, but that's not his name. 
strats in as well from Bourne to Chill. There is the defending Air Force from Broby. The counterplay in from Martian. The two Air Forces mingle. Where are the ASFs going from in a blink? Well, he's got his own battle brewing over in the east, it would seem. He would love to take down the ASFs of Born to Chill and provide an opening for his Corsair fighter bombers that look like they're already on mission as they head towards Born to Chill's comm. Born to Chill's comm stomping his way towards the water, perhaps concerned that those two shields aren't going to provide enough coverage. But Inablinks decided against it. Back they go. As a result, has that uh, caused problems over in the west? Crabs breaching the very west coast of that far left pond. Two operational crabs left on that side for Broby. Two moving in from Martian. There is a Colossus, a badly damaged Colossus as well, which gets a ranked vet as he kills off that crab that had his butt to him. Never a good position to be in, in my mind. Another crab down in the west. Roby with one crab left on that side, still being bombed to oblivion from strats belonging to both Martian and Born to Kill. Another Colossus inbound, some 80,000 hit points on that tank after the lead one goes down. Tutankhamun strolls through with a bunch of bricks right past that megalith whose HP are plummeting as that Colossus from the rear comes in and targets him. But I think the main base might be safe. Martians lost those naval facilities. He's lost his forward mexes. The front line's been compromised. There's a ton of mass dropped on that little coastline there. Look at that. We're up over 150,000 mass there. There's another 90,000 mass or over 100,000 there. Wave of spy planes out from Broby over the top of Born to Chill's base. Born to Chill under the water now surrounded by Sam's. I think that's probably a wise move. He recognized the air threat. That is a ton of Corsairs. 125 to be precise. That will ruin your day and your face. Vexy languishing in the pond in the bottom left hand corner. And what have we got here? Is this clean up detail? T3 engineers brought in to hoover up as much mass as they can. There's certainly a lot of mass to be had. Roby doesn't want to let it go to waste. In come the engineers. This is right on the front line stuff, though. Fat boys in range of it, to be honest. They'd be lucky to get anything. Now, artillery strike successful. No way Martian was going to allow that to happen. <laughs> Proby says fat boy. Yeah. Pity you hadn't uh, noticed that beforehand for your engineer's sake. A lot of widows got made today. That's a lot of Ithotas that Born to Chill has amassed and a fat boy all lurking under the water. Strats and Nothers just being sent in in single file, getting shot down for their trouble. I think there's a route in now, although, I mean, obviously there's so many Corsairs. As soon as they emerge from the water, they're going to be in trouble. He does have some Cougar T3 mobile anti-air. So now the counter-attack on the other side of the map. The strategic missile submarines did get destroyed in that last attack in the west. So no nukes out from them. Here come some strats. 
They've taken out one of the Athotas. Three of the other four are partially, if not badly, damaged. And they are running into major megalith resistance. So they're going to turn around and they're going to take iron store damage as they go. That did not work out well. There are just too many experimentals lying in wait. He's not going to get back any of them, thanks to the Corsairs. All five, was it? One, two, three, four, five of those Ithotas crushed in no time at all. That was an unfortunate uh, outcome from that attack. I don't blame him. Even on paper, I thought that was worth a shout. Didn't uh, adequately assess the threat of what was lurking down here. Three megaliths. All of this air-based firepower, just too much for them to contend with. We have crossed the one hour, one minute threshold. We've still seen no base to base artillery. We've got one under construction at one hour, one minute. It's about 55% done. Launch and our first nuke, we do also have a single Novak satellite out. The nuke comes out from Tutankhamun. It's going directly north. That's the position. It's going to wipe out a handful of mass fab farms. Martian is pulling in 1.4k mass at the present time, 1.3 to 1.4. We'll have a look and see if that dents it in any major way once this nuke connects. 1.4k down to 1.2k. Novak satellite, there's the base of operations, but another one soon to be complete. And in fact, he's queued up 1, 2, 3, 4... So he's going for five Novak satellites at the current time. That will be difficult to repel if he's able to get all of those online. A massive concern potentially for Team 2. Satellite lurking at the current time above Broby's base. Broby busily trying to shield the place up. He's got a lot of vulnerable T3 P-Gens. He discovers the emissary under construction and targets the T3 reactor, which is Partially exposed out the side of that shield gen. Looks like it. And the next Novaks inbound. Three fat boys and a megalith belonging to Martian. Clearing this area of Team 2 presence. Vexy firmly in command of this western lake now. This must be a good feeling after how he's been languishing sort of in around this position for about 75-80% of the game after he lost control of that pond. But will he be able to hold it with the sheer amount of inbound artillery? Three fatties, three megaliths, so much potential damage. We have got two megaliths from Broby under the water here, but I wonder if you could just use those three megaliths and ground fire the water and the AoE would hit it. That is pretty deep there. Maybe not. Broadswords find themselves surrounded by hostile air superiority fighters belonging to Broby. In come the friendly Geminis. How many broadswords will he lose, though? Geminis switch to air-to-air. I mean, they're already on air to air with the bad chips, but you know what I mean. They switch to switch targets to the air superiority fighters. Torque bombers from Inner Blink. Hovering over this lake now, and now it looks like Born to Chill is in a difficult position. We've got a megalith. We have tons of bricks from Tutankhamun marching on this position. We do have a lot of point defense. That is the one saving grace, but will it be enough to keep this threat out? The comm is on the move away from the main base. Probably not a terrible decision. And we have an operational artillery piece. At one hour, four minutes. I think that might be the first inbound shell. Looks like it's going 
deep after the emissary, maybe the emissary, which is nearly done at 10,800 hit points out of 12,000. Three operational Novak satellites hovering over this position. They're not going for the emissary at the moment, although they just switched, having taken out some reactors belonging to Broby. Will they be able to penetrate with the help of that Seraphim artillery piece? One of the shields destroyed. Oh man, shield coverage down. Emissary surely doomed. Look at the hit point diet he's on. Just shedding them. And there go all the engineers around it as well. That was a good choice. Ouch, that's really got to hurt for Team 2 and Vexy. But uh, the progress that Inner Blink is making over in the east and alongside Tutankhamun, that should feel pretty good. That epic line of T2 point defense that I was waxing lyrical about has been annihilated along with the most of Born to Chill's base. Born to Chill moving right back up to the top of the screen over here and hurriedly trying to work on more experimentals. Will desperately want to keep this artillery installation alive. Will be gutted to have lost his main base. Not much Martian could have done about it, really. He's in full standoff mode, going for as many Novak satellites as he can muster. He now has one, two, three, four, five, soon to be six, maybe seven or eight. That is a huge amount of damage. He's still pulling in 1.3k. The mass totals, though, in team values have leveled. It's 1.9k apiece. And then, as soon as I mention it, of course, Team 2 take the lead at about a 1.9 to 2k to 1.8 to 1.9k. It's that kind of level. It's about a 300,000 mass difference in total mass accrued. But does that really matter now? I suggest probably not. Born to Chill taking Strap Bomber fire. He has got advanced nano repair. That's a 264 hit point a second regen. He's going to make a play for the water, but really, surely, he's only de delaying the inevitable here. This top right-hand corner has completely fallen to Team 2. In come the Megaliths. The artillery installation is exposed. Born to Chill has made the water, but he's down to 22,000 hit points out of 51,800. There is a nuke. Where is it coming from? It's coming out of Martian. He's got twin nuke launchers there in his main base target hard to say maybe he's taken out he's probably seen what he's taken out he's probably taken out any strategic missile defense with his novak satellites the novak satellites are moving on to other territories over here towards tutankhar moon's base allowing the nuke to finish off what's left of the air production facilities that is going to connect that is down and out the artillery installation meanwhile has been destroyed horn to chill finds himself locked into the water at the top right hand side of the screen another nuke out this time it's from Tutankhamun who's been lurking under shield coverage with one just on the pond bank it's nearly got another one complete but I don't think it's going to see the opportunity as those Novak satellites burn their way through those weak cyber and shields where did that nuke go did it get shot down I've lost track of it no What's that at the top of the screen there? That was Broby going for another telemaser attempt, trying to deal a killing blow to the Novak satellites. And I'm only seeing one or two. I'm seeing two, three, no, as the nuclear fire dies down. They're all still there. He didn't manage to get rid of it. I thought for a moment he had dealt with most of them. But there's still four, five, six remaining Novak satellite stations. Maybe... This attack from in a blink can deal with it. We've got three megaliths and a monkey lord coming their way. But the Novak satellites are still alive. Where are they going? Scathis under production in the main base of in a blink. Most of the power production has been annihilated in Tutankhamun's main base. Inbound nuclear missile. Again, same tactic. Use the Novak satellites to kill off the nuke defense and as much else as you can. Then send in a nuke to clear the area whilst the satellites go on to find new targets. New targets over here. Looks like it might be the SMD again. They switch target to a vulnerable PGen just south of the shield. 
But look at this. They're not going to have much time left with those Novak satellites. The experimentals from Inner Blink have reached their target. Down go three centers. Down goes a fourth. Still three left over here. But only two operational satellites on site. The other one is still en route. Can he kill that SMD before he loses the satellite? One more satellite center down. Oh, and there goes the other one. He managed to pick off one more reactor and its neighboring air facility. But this is going to be harsh. There's a lot of mass fab farms around here that will eat into Martians' mass production. Vexy inherited all of Broby's stuff. But look at the push that's been going on. There's been so much going on. I can't cover everything. But massive crab push over in the west. Killing off everything belonging to Vexy. Most of which he just inherited from Broby. Two crabs remain. Sorry, three crabs remain if you count this southern one from Tutankhamun. All of the mass fab farms on this little island at the top of the screen have been more or less obliterated strap bombs en route but there's still three crabs more or less on 50 percent health air production now switched to t1 bombers it's get anything offensive out in the sky asap to try and counter we do have two crabs back here and a third Crabs need to be on the move, though, in the southwest. I appreciate Martian is incredibly busy right now. Born to Chill still alive, trying to resurrect things over in the northeast, but he's not going to be useful for some time, if at all. This game is massively escalating right now. Feels like I haven't been able to take a breath in about 10 minutes. Megalith on 2,300 hit points. Is that the last? No, it's not. That's just Tutankhamun's Moons in the south. Still two more partially damaged ones belonging to Inner Blink up at the top of the screen. Ah, oh, and there is Martian's Com potentially in danger. It's all about whether the Team 2 recognise the positioning, however. But the main base is of Vexy and what was Broby have been annihilated. One hero defensive megalith inbound from Tutankhamun. He's going to get spanked. More experimentals inbound. Lots of support commanders trying to re-establish. Oh my goodness, he needs to get both of those megaliths out. They're starting to chew into the main base facilities now. There's a megalith over here. Why isn't he bringing that megalith in? Bring that megalith to bear and help kill that last one off. That last one that's got 79,000 hit points still on the tank as it chews into his air production facilities and power gen capabilities. Team 2 now outdoing Team 1 in terms of eco 1.3k to 1.1. Roby saying, dude, are you slow? I'm not sure who he's talking to. I think this is a mistake. Just send Summit. Well, they're actually, no, there's two more in there. They're going to have to go in formation and sort threats as they go. They do have a whole load of Percy's down here, though, that could be making their way in towards the little southern island down here. T1 bombers redeployed, having finally helped kill off those two megaliths at the top. To his credit, he's managed to hold on to a decent swathe of facilities up here. He's got about, well, he's got a, I don't know, maybe about 10 or so air facilities, air production facilities, but a Scathis is online. We saw it under production earlier. There it is. That is the biggest threat now to Team 1 that has to be taken out. They have massive amounts of forces on the ground in this bottom left-hand corner, but it's a long old slog to get into range to finish them off. Are we going to look at a complete double base trade here where both sides get their bases obliterated and it just comes down to com assassination, I wonder. Born to chill. Bringing his com out onto the island over here. Wasting no time getting on board with production of an arse washer or an awasar to you and me. Lots and lots of 
reclaim that could be funneled into that if he's got the build capacity to do it. Just look at these big numbers. Big old air battle. Strategic launch. Once again, Check. cementing Team 1's aerial supremacy, which will be good because there is a bug lurking over here. Good for them at any rate. Strategic launch fired at that Scathis. Is there an SMD in the area? There's one down here and there's six anti-nukes loaded. Pretty sure that will proc on its way in. If he'd put the nuke further up, that might have just clipped it. But that's going to get shot down. Ooh. Bug out to engage the inbound crabs. Where's the air force? That needs to be sent in immediately to shoot that bug down. But look at the devastation the Scathist has unleashed. The once proud and strong base of Martian has been annihilated. He's got one nuke left in the silo ready to go. If he can just kill off that SMD. There's a lot of inbound crabs though. I can't believe he's managed to stitch together these soul rippers in such short order. Martian running out of air superiority fighters. He's down to just 890 mass per tick. I know that's still a lot, but compared to what he was on, he was on almost double that about 5 or 10 minutes ago. Megaliths almost in range. Scathis has retracted its barrels and is now on the move, trying to keep its distance from that inbound threat. That's a lot of strap bombers that in a blink has cobbled together. He is holding strong here at the end of this game. Tutankhamun contributing as and where he can with these soul rippers. We've got three fresh crabs inbound though in the center. The lead crabs are operational but they're badly damaged. Starting to target major infrastructure at the front of this base. This has been absolute mayhem. One hour, 16 minutes. We're still not all tied up. One last ditch effort from Vexy sending in a crab. That's getting gunshipped to death by a combination of whalers and jesters. Finally, it goes down. Back in on the big show over here. Oh. And Martian's running out of crabs. He's now got two soul rippers on him and a bajillion revenants swarming around him. Martian completely out of air superiority fighters. And he, unable to produce more ostensibly. He has lost the air game. That Scathis completely did him in. And it's still alive. Extending its barrels Strategic once more. Detected. He fires his nuke. That's his last nuke unless he's completed another one. He has completed another one in that second nuke launcher. But unless he's able to take down that SMD. Which is well safe of the inbound... Threat. In fact, his crabs are having to withdraw. Where's the nuke going? I've completely lost track of it. Has it been shut down already? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Sailing deep. But again, getting shot down. Not giving that SMD a wide enough berth. And there is the capitulation. GG's out from Martian. Some players leaving. That was what the desync was about. The Control K active. Control K's all round. Wow. One hour, 17 minutes and 25 seconds. That was an absolutely crazy match. And I'm exhausted. I mean, I didn't even know who to give MVP to. Martian was just unreal. I sort of want to give it to him. But then in a blink, who'd been pretty quiet for a lot of the game, came in with a clutch play at the end. The Scathis was the winning piece. It took down the air production facilities, made it impossible for Martian to keep up with air production. He lost air control and then all of his plethora of inbound experimentals. It's not really a plethora, isn't it? Because it was just lots and lots of one type, but a, uh, a ton of crabs. Look at this crab graveyard. That is something else. Ridiculous amounts of mass across the map. Absolutely crazy. I am exhausted. Yeah, I think MVP goes to Martian for a valiant effort. Team 1 with two men down for much of that game. Having lost a man in the first 12 minutes to uh, net failure or whatever it was. 
so I have to give it to him. But I think honourable mention to in a blink, and honourable mention as well to Broby, because he he was a big player on Team Two, despite how I feel about Teddy Snipes. <laughs> going into it I don't want to go into it again you guys know my feelings and if you're new and you don't know my feelings please watch lots of other casts it's all there Uh, and speaking of watching other casts guys if you like that content and want to help support me I have a Patreon it's a mere dollar a month almost every week we add an extra premium cast we're up to 79 now casts 79 premium content casts for your viewing pleasure we also have the discord a little budding community there where you can come and chat with me and others and uh, occasionally we organise some games. Just had uh, Captain Klutz, my uh, wonderful Discord admin, setting up a game, unfortunately, for Easter Monday. I'm not going to be around for, but uh, there will be others, certainly. So if you want to get involved there, please do check that out. Link in the description below. Like I said, it's a mere dollar a month. It really helps me. And while you're down there, love, do chat in the comments. Tell me how beautiful you're feeling today. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. It all helps It's all wonderful. It's all good. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.